Hi everyone, how are you doing? It's Elster Nation here. So we're going to paint a Dreadmoor from Forge World today. So I've started off, I've already base coated it, so it's primed black and then primed with a top down grey spray. Uh, they're used by, um, oh, Badger Airbrush. Their, their primer range, I can't remember it right now. Someone correct me in the comments. Um, yeah, it's really good, really good, but you can't remember it right now. So we're going to start off with Zandri Dust. Um, I apologise in advance for this video. There are a lot of shots in my hat getting in the way, so the camera placement wasn't great. So oh, apologies, it's going to happen, but I'm showing you as much as I can from sort of start to finish. Uh, so we're just going to go with Zandri Dust with an airbrush all over this. Steiner Rares, that's the ones, now I remember them. Steiner Rares Primer from Badger. They're really good. Okay, now we're coming in with Carrick Stone. And this is going to be a sort of touch up highlight. So. Again, doing most of it, but leaving a bit of that Zandri dust behind. And we're going uh, top and bottom with this. Okay, now's the interesting part. So this is a stencil from Fallout Hobbies. Now, if I remember rightly, this one is the reptile, one of the reptile stencils. Um, I'm going to try and put this on the bottom. Now, you can see how much fiddling is going on with this right now, because um, it doesn't like go around bends. Um, so I figured out starting from the mouth and working backwards was probably my best bet. but there's a lot of fiddling. So, and we're just gonna airbrush on some bleach bone. And what you wanna do as well with these stencils is they will stick, but you wanna hit the stencil sort of directly down. Um, if you hit it at an angle, it will go underneath, underneath, sorry, and you'll get bleed through. So if you can, try and hit the stencil directly on with the airbrush. Okay, so we're also going to apply just the tiniest amount of white on top of that as well, just to get a little bit more of a contrast. Now, next bit is the tricky bit, trying to get that pattern to work around a bend. Also going up, so it's kind of like a double bend. Um, as you can see, I kind of had to fold it a little bit, but to know it, be honest, I was kind of working on this that that would happen with scales as well so you wouldn't get clear circles going around the corners and stuff it would bend into itself so um hopefully with a lot of fiddling around i eventually got to the stage where i'm going to do it now what you want to make sure is make sure it's sticking as best you can so there is a lot of fiddling just be patient you'll get there with it uh, and when you get to the stage you want just hit it with the airbrush as quick as you can. Yeah. And again, the two layers, bleach bone and then a little bit of white. Now you see that area where I missed it? Just going over a little bit with white, just to try and get a bit more sense on it, and just doing a bit of a highlight on the scales on top of the armor because it will work in the contrast in the next layers. Also, going to do the face a little bit, avoiding the sort of armored parts.
But right, now the next part I thought I'd avoid a little bit of fiddling, and this is the snakeskin one, and this is going over the top. And this is using Skag, Scrag Brown? Scrag Brown? I think that's what it's called. Skag Brown? Scrag Brown. <laughs> um, and yeah, this is the first one. Now there's a trick with this. So, hit it first with this brown, the light one. Now, what you're going to see me do here is take the stencil off and put it back on again. But, I'm not going to put it on. I'm going to put it on as an overlap. So, it's not matching. What I did before so it's only a mm, couple of mil off what it was before but it's definitely you'll see when I get my fat fingers out of the way that yeah I'm not matching up the same way as it was before now we're gonna hit it with dryad bark And we've got this cool pattern now. And then we try and repeat the process. Again, going round a bend, probably the trickiest part, and also with big horns in a way, doesn't help matters. So there's quite a lot of fiddling of this bit.
Okay, so this bit I'm actually just painting the horns quickly, so I'm just using a piece of old um, cloth here uh, just to hide off the rest of it. So I'm just tucking behind the horns and so I don't get overspray onto the rest of the scale. So I'm doing this as well, I thought I'd come back and actually do the horns as well, so that's some Zandri dust. And we're going to take a little bit of Carrick stone again. Okay, so next we're going to get some seraphim se sepia, sepia, however you want to pronounce it, and we're just going to blast the entire thing with it. Um, this is kind of watered down, so uh, it shouldn't go on overly thick. Um, but yeah, just going to spray the whole model with this just to uh, half blend it and tone it a little bit. So we're coming back in with dry bark. And we're just going to do a little bit of brown on the base here. Then we're going to come in with some dark reaper. And we're going to add another layer to the base. Then we're going to use some Dawnstone Grey. And then we're going to come with some administratum grey just as a bit of highlight come with some XV88 and we're just going to do tiny little spots of this everywhere, I just add another layer and another bit of depth to it Take some aggrax earth shade and we're going to wash the entire thing. Not the uh, monster itself, just the base.
Okay, now once that's dry, we're going to start painting the mouth and we're going to start with Nagaroth Knight. And we're just going to paint the inside and the sort of gum areas. coming in with Zerius purple? I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not sure. Um, and yeah, we're just adding a bit of a highlight to this, so going over most of it again, but just leaving some of the very darkest recesses. When you get to the inside mouth, I tend to, uh, when I was painting, I tend to look at it as rings, because if you see the teeth, they're in kind of rings, basically, so for ease of painting, etc., just paint the ring um, of teeth so just paint where all the teeth kind of connect and the gums there and as you highlight up just paint closer and closer to the teeth just makes life a lot easier rather than trying to paint every single bump of every single gum um, it doesn't really matter because a wash will just get into all the cracks and crevices anyway so as best you'll see in a little bit then we're going to go with Gene Steeler Purple and we're going to add another highlight and this will be more catching even some of the higher edges. So we're starting to see some of those lines appear now. And as you probably won't see because my fat hand gets in the way a lot, uh, painting the gums and the rings of teeth. Next, we're going to mix some Lazdaka Red with the Gene Steeler Purple, and we're going to highlight it up a bit, so just so we've got a bit more of a kind of fleshy tone with it. Not so much an alien look. some white to that mix and do some even more brighter highlights so being quite neat now and as you can see I'm actually adding more white as I go along so there's basically two layers in this one so there's just adding a certain part of white and then adding even more white to get even more of the highlights As you go with each highlight, you just paint less and less, that's all. So, and the same thing applies for the rings of teeth as well.
Okay, as you can see here, we're going to have a really high highlight now. We're adding quite a lot of white to that mix. But we're painting less and less, so just the very highest points of this one. Okay, now we're going to come off with Dragon of Nightshade, and this is watered down. And we're just going to wash his mouth out with it. Now I have to apologise, there's a point in this video which you won't see, um, and that's painting all the tiny little teeth inside. Um, basically I do it the same way as I do the other teeth, but there were so many and they're so small, um, my hand gets in the way, there was really no point in filming it. But yeah, you paint every single tooth. So that can be a bit painstaking. So this next bit is coming back in with some of that Scag brown, scrag brown, whichever one it is. Um, and I wanted to make the scales at the back by the horns redefine them because it looked like they've had a bit of uh, bleed from the airbrush. So, uh, and also tidy up some of the areas which weren't, didn't look quite right. So I wanted to fill in a lot of those gaps and make it look like there was a bit more of a solid chunk on the top of his head there. And there's one thing to note as well, trying to get the inspiration for this one, um, the thing I did do was actually go out and have a look at a lot of snakes. I actually been to the zoo the day I painted this, which helped quite a lot. Um, but reference pictures are invaluable on, on this sort of a project because the reason why this resonates so well with a lot of people is very close to nature in real life, so they, a lot of people can empathise with it. So uh, I was going to say, if you're going to do something like this, or any of your own artwork, find something which already exists and try and emulate it a bit. See what you get, because you'll get some interesting results, and a lot of people will be drawn to it if they can, if they feel a connection with it. They're like, I've seen that before, it looks quite interesting, so... Now the other thing I do as well is come back in with some dryer bark um, just to touch up the dark browns as well. And kind of link all them together.
Okay, now we're going to come with some gloss varnish. Um, if you want the GW equivalent, it's our coat. And we're just going to paint this all over the mouth. bleach bone and this is going to be a dry brush all over the scale or plates on the top of the head and the back and this is a very very light dry brush you can probably see well probably won't see that much actually happen to it but it just gives that slightly extra defining lines for the plates I didn't want it to be too, to be too bold because I want it to actually look like skin as well so And I thought while I'm out, I'll paint a little skeleton on the base with it. And I thought I'd do a dry brush on the base as well, because it seemed to make sense. It should pick out all the edges and everything on the base a little bit more, so they'll become a bit more defined now. And then some Agrax for the shade over the skeleton, just to bring him back down. Now I'm painting a little bit of bleach bone in his eyes, just to start defining them. What I thought I'd also do as well is start going back over some of the scales and bringing them back up so they look a little bit more pronounced on the face. Also allowed me to cover up some of the mistakes where I've had um, bleed through on the airbrush or overspray as people call it. Quite easy this bit, all you do is just paint over the squares where, or squares or spots where it is. Stay within the lines and you're fine. What it did allow me to do as well is also uh, where these armor met the underside of it, allowed me to clean it up with by adding more spots to it and covering up all the overspray. Come back in with some Zandri dust. And we're just going to paint the teeth again. You're not going to see me paint all the little ones because that's just insane. And then we're coming in with some bleach bone just to highlight them up. And again, you do this with the little teeth as well. OK, 
Okay, so now we're going to use some Troll Slayer Orange. And we're just going to paint his eyes. Then we're going to come in with some Bleach Bone again. And just paint over the middle part. Then we're going to come with some Flash Gets Yellow and paint over the eye again. And then we're going to come in with some Dawn Yellow and try and give it just the tiniest little bit of a highlight. Chaos Black. And just draw a line where the pupil will be. Take your time with this bit, it's a bit tricky. And then we're going to take some satin varnish. We're going to paint all over the skin apart from the mouth and the base. So this includes the top and the bottom. So we're coming towards the end of the video here, guys. Um, what you'll see, uh, what I've done in the finished one, is just added some sort of static grass to it and some uh, little bits of flock to it as well. And just paint the rim of it black as well, just touch it up. So um, let me know what you think. If you like to drop us a sort of comment, hit the subscribe button, give us a like if you like. Um, share it around. There's other painting tutorials on my channel. There will be more in the future, so stick around. There'll be more on this way. Right.